Hello everyone and welcome to the YouTube channel of Being ACCA. This is Tushita Gupta, ACC affiliate. And in this video, we are solving a kit question. This also happens to be a past paper question, although, you know, pretty long in the past. So it's June 2007, GTKINC. Let's get started with the question. Uh, I'm first going to have a read through the requirements. So the first requirement is a 10 marker requirement, which wants me to calculate the net present value for each of the number of sunny days and the overall expected NPV of the proposal. I also have to comment on my uh, findings and ignore the taxation part in this part of the question. And the second requirement wants me to assume that the company wishes to raise $1.5 million. And I have to discuss how equity finance or traded debt bonds might be raised, clearly indicating which source of finance you would recommend and the reasons for your recommendation. So this is again a 10 marker requirement. Let's have a read at the information. So the finance director of GTK INC is preparing its capital budget for the forthcoming period and is examining a number of capital investment proposals that have been received from its subsidiary. Details of one of the proposals is as follows. Proposal number one, Division A has requested that it be allowed to invest $500,000 in solar panels, which would be fitted in the roof of its production facility in order to reduce its de uh, dependency on oil as an energy source. Now, the solar panels would save energy costs of $700 per day, but only on the sunny days. The division has estimated the following probabilities of sunny days in each year. Scenario 1 says 100 sunny days and probability of that happening is 30%. Scenario 2 says 125 and the probability is 60%. And then you have 10% probability of 150 sunny days. Each scenario is expected to persist indefinitely. That is, if there are 100 sunny days in the first year, there will be 100 sunny days in every subsequent year. Maintenance costs for the solar panels are expected to be $2,000 per month for labor and replacement parts, irrespective of the number of sunny days per year. So, so the solar plan, uh, panels are expected to be used indefinitely. That means you're going to use them to perpetuity. So let's get to our working. Let's also have a read at the other information. GTK Incorporation is a profitable listed company with several million dollars of shareholders funds, a small overdraft and no long-term debt. For profit calculation purposes, GTK Incorporation depreciates assets on a straight line basis over their useful economic life. The company can claim tax allowable depreciation on machinery on a 25% reducing balance basis and pays profit uh, pays tax on profit at an annual rate of 30% in the year in which the liability arises it uh, has a before tax cost of capital of 10% and after tax uh, cost of capital of 8% so this is what their cost of capital looks like now let's have a read at the scenario again you have to calculate the npv for each of the expected number of sunny days so let's put our workings for each of the scenarios. Scenario 1, Scenario 2, and then Scenario 3. So these are all our scenarios. And let's first put the very first thing, which is number of sunny days. So if you see the number of sunny days which are provided for Scenario 1, it's given to us as 100. Secondly, it's 125. Third scenario, it's 150. So this is what you have. Now talking about the savings, savings that you have in dollars per day is given to you. Saving per day is going to be 700. So this is what your savings look like. So now you'll also be able to work out your annual savings. Your annual savings would happen to be your per day savings multiplied by the number of days you actually have that savings. So this is what it will come to now this is what you will save now the next thing is to look at the costs of it cost it's given to you that you will have two thousand dollars per month so annually it's going to be two thousand multiplied by twelve i'm putting a negative sign to represent that this is a cost this is an outflow of money from our pockets so this is twenty four thousand dollars going out so in net how much are you saving Net saving that you're getting is the saving 
plus your costs. Costs are already put as negative figures, so it will work the same way. All right, so this is what your net annual savings are going to look like. Now, you have to work out over here the present value of your net savings. So, you're going to use the perpetuity uh, factors over here. So, for perpetuity, you simply divide it by your uh, cost of capital. So, your present value is going to be this figure divided by 0.1, which is your cost of capital. Similarly, in the next year, it's going to be the same. And then in the next year, also the same. So, this is what your present values look like. And then you're going to have to account for the initial investments that you are doing initial investments one thing which you might be having a doubt in your mind that why did i take 10 percent as the cost of capital and why not eight percent so if you see this part of the question wants you to ignore taxation so we are ignoring tax and we are only working at the before tax this before tax is before the impact of any taxation that's what we want that's why we've taken 10 percent now let's subtract our initial investment this is five hundred thousand dollars given to us in the question so this is what your initial investment looks like and it will be there in all of the scenarios. So net effect, your NPV is going to be the difference between your investment and your present values. So this is what you will find out your NPVs to be. Now, there are probabilities also associated. So, we are going to multiply the NPVs along with the probabilities that are associated with them. So, 30%, 60%, and 10%. This is what the probabilities look like. Now, you are going to have to find the expected value of the probabilities. So, it's going to be nothing but the sum uh, of the products. So, this plus this figure. plus this figure multiplied by the probability of this figure occurring. So, you'll ultimately arrive at the expected net present value of $100,000. Now, you also have to leave a comment. If you remember the requirement, you have to comment on your findings also. So, over here, your expected NPV is coming out to be $100,000. So, the decision rule says that NPV, if the NPV is positive, you accept the project. So, over here, the NPV is $100,000 positive. Hence, you're going to accept the order of the project. However, you're also going to point out that the probability that you see over here, you have a very high chance, that is 30% chance of making losses. This is a very big risk which is associated with this um, project. Also, the assumption which they asked us to take in the question that uh, the number of sunny days each year will be constant. However, this may not be true. And this is also possible that the NPVs that you're getting in scenario one and three, they are representing the extremes that, you know, something very good will happen, something very bad will happen. However, this will, it'll be like maybe something in the middle is happening. So, uh, you know, the NPV is not going to give you a very good uh analysis over here so uh, also the inflation has not been taken into account over here and also the cost of increasing energy is also going to make this thing very attractive because you know the cost of electricity is going up day by day so probably if you account for those savings also then this might make this project more financially acceptable for you now coming to your second requirement which says that they want to raise money and you have to discuss, recommend rather, that which source should they choose? Should they be going for equity or should they be going for the traded debt, which is actually bonds? So now the company 
currently has no long term debt and they have a very small overdraft so the 1.1 million dollars that they have that they want to raise they can go for multiple methods with this one so the first method is going for equity finance so for equity they could either go for rights issue that means the shareholders who are already holding the shares in the company are offered new shares on the basis of pro rata to their existing holdings so in whatever proportion they are currently holding the shares they will be getting the offer to buy in the same proportion so what's going to happen over here you would not be disturbing the ownership you know the dilution of ownership is not going to happen whoever was holding how many number of shares is now going to hold the same proportion of the shares another method if you go for equity finance is going to be private placement so private placement basically involves you uh, you know sh uh, issuing your shares to some institutional investors so over here there will also be a you know a change in the ownership so the ownership may get diluted because another uh, party who was not earlier the shareholder is now going to get significant control of the company then if you talk about the traded debt which you say bonds uh, again the company has choice they could either go for redeemable ones irredeemable ones secured or unsecured fixed rate floating rate and maybe even convertible ones so over here the company is going to have to consider multiple scenarios multiple aspects number one let's talk about the security so some assets uh, some bonds also need to be secured by some assets so you might have to put as collateral the lands and buildings or anything like that to be able to provide security for the debt so if you default to pay the debt the uh, the debt holders can take the action and then recover their money with the help of selling whatever you you've kept the asset as a collateral similarly whether to decide for a fixed rate or floating rate so fixed rate basically gives you some sort of a prediction that you know this is what your interest payments are going to look like but then ultimately you are binding yourself to one rate so if the rates are going to change in your favor still you're not going to get the benefit however if you talk about a floating rate this keeps on changing with the market but again this is going to make prediction of your expenses a little bit difficult how much will be charged as interest you it will be very difficult for you to predict and then let's talk about the cost of capital so currently they have no long term debt and also very small overdraft so if you see uh, theoretically and you know practically also we see that debt is usually cheaper than equity so if they want to reduce their overall cost of capital they can go for issuing of debt because currently they do not have any debt issued so they can take a little bit of a debt so with it uh, with that they will be able to take the benefit of the tax uh, that is applicable over the interest that you pay on the debt and also the uh, other benefits which are associated with debt so this is how you're going to frame your answer for this 10 marker requirement with this we are done with the question thank you so much for watching i hope that this was useful